today is a, a little bit of a, a bittersweet day as we're actually saying goodbye to uh, this car, to our Citroen Grand Picasso and picking up uh, another car. And those of you that have watched uh, some of my previous video vlogs will know that that's quite a lot of thought went into getting this car, but that was over four years ago now. And uh, at that time I was pondering on getting a maybe a Prius Plus, a kind of hybrid uh, car. The plug-in hybrids at that time that were big were way beyond our budget. Uh, so anyway, we ended up settling on, on this. And it's done pretty well actually over the years. We, the last 6,000 miles, um, it's averaged 47 miles to the gallon for a big seven-seater. That's not too bad. And it has been really pretty faultless over the four years that we've had it. The only thing I can remember that kind of went wrong was on our, a European trip we took. So the car has taken us, all six of us, all the way down to the south of Italy and back. And on one day when we were driving back up from Naples to Nice, it was about 40, 42 degrees, and the air conditioning packed up, and so rapidly the car became like an oven, and I was thinking, oh, I cannot believe the air conditioning is broken when we are down in the south of Europe. We stopped for lunch, and uh, I did a bit of uh, searching online to see what on earth it could be and and twigged ah, it might be just that the air conditioning was having to work so hard because we were driving up the coast road so it had been very humid and when we came back out to the car indeed the air conditioning was fine so the evaporator had just frozen up and so there was no airflow and because the air conditioning was having to work so hard so once we knew that we could kind of work around it and all was fine so that's been the only thing uh, that has kind of gone wrong but haven't really gone wrong over four years and nearly 42,000 miles so it's, it's been great uh, as a car but last year uh, we decided to uh, make a change uh, because we'd seen that there was a, a an EV that was out that was uh, very affordable and would be an okay size for us. Um, we don't need seven seats any longer. Two of the uh, children are away, adults now, are away to university, or at least they were, until the pandemic uh, set in their back home now. Um, but generally we don't need seven seats and all this space so we can come down in size and get something that's uh, more affordable to run. Though this has been pretty cheap uh, to run for a car of this size. So that is what we are doing today. Is we're heading down to Brechin to pick up uh, our new car. This will be the longest drive I've had since the pandemic. Um, otherwise just been pootering around the local area. And yesterday, I'm hoping, I had to put a little bit of fuel into this car to make sure we had enough to get down the road. I'm hoping that that is the last time ever I will have to fill up a car with diesel. Fingers crossed.
so this is it we have bought an mg zs ev and that's to replace the the citroen and we're going to keep the uh, the renault zoe for another good few years yet now on the zoe um it's actually been in the garage um it went in just a few days before the lockdown uh, happened and it was awaiting a part that was on back order from France and then of course the lockdown took place so we haven't had the Zoe for the whole period of the lockdown I think the garage has opened again now uh, today even and uh, so hopefully we'll hear back from them soon and get the the Zoe back and then we will have a that's the horn <laughs> Excuse I'll check me. the horn now, and the horn works well. <laughs> I'm I'm leaning with the gimbal on the on the steering wheel, and uh, well, the horn works fine. So so that's all cool. Um, so yeah, so we've we've been uh, without a, an EV for the whole period of the lockdown, um, just the way things have happened. And the MG actually arrived at the dealership the week before the lockdown took place. So we were just kind of making preparations to. Uh, pick it up and then uh, the dealership closed and that was that so it has been sitting there for three months and today we picked it up we got the uh, dynamic red version and the exclusive version so the the citroen we had the grand picasso was also an exclusive version and both of them shared the kind of main feature being a big glass uh, roof uh, above us now we were just drove over to what is the kind of fort at Aberdeen and you get a great view over the the harbour from here and when we the first day I picked up the Zoe we came up here to take a picture of the car kind of looking out over Aberdeen so we did the same today and there is har everywhere if you don't live near a coast you won't know what that is but there is just a, a sea mist everywhere. So we cannot see Aberdeen at all. Can't see anything of it. But we thought we should bring the car up here to take a picture anyway. We had the sunroof open just to try it out on the way. And literally 10 seconds? Yeah, maybe Maybe, maybe 20, I don't know, less than a minute after we close the sunroof a seagull decided to deposit its innards all over the car. So here we go. We're going to have to clean the car first day. Ay, ay, ay. This is what living near the sea does. Never mind. Anyway, the MG. So we, we picked up the MG and for a, a lot of the same reasons, a lot of folks have picked up one of these MGs in the first kind of few thousand orders that they've had. It's been selling really well. Uh, because it was being a you know a really good deal for what is a much bigger car than the Zoe, and the battery capacity is for us it's about double what the the Zoe was, so that gives a, a useful uh, expansion in range. And and for us, our kind of main longer journeys would be a journey down to Glasgow. So with a little bit of care, I think we'd be able to do that in one. Uh, or uh, if we're going faster, maybe with a, a 10 minute top up uh, round about Perth. Um, so much, much quicker than has been the case in the past for uh, traveling up and down the road when we were in uh, the Zoe. I'll just close the, uh, close the windows there. I think there's somebody coming up uh, and around. And so that's, that's great. And we'll look forward to that. Now it had, um, it has had some of the Comfort Two update done, but not all of it. Now this seems to be something that is uh, common to a few folks uh, just at the moment. Now what that means is that some of the really annoying little quirks that the car had initially have been ironed out. Too many warning uh, alert uh, bong sounds. Um, they have kind of softened the chime sound that's used, improved the MG Pilot, which is a kind of uh, um, assisted driving uh, things. Uh, exterior temperature now appears on the uh, infra 
infotainment screen and you always have a note of your uh, mileage remaining on the battery in front of you which is great however some of those so some of it has been done i think the main bulk of the updates have been done uh, but there's one update that needs to be done on a usb stick and it hasn't been done so there was a bit of confusion when i picked up the car and i realized that some of the updates have been done but not all of them so it may need to go back just to to get that uh, complete and then it should be all sorted but it uh, some of the issues that folks have raised in the other videos about when you're indicating and uh, an alarm going off when you cross over even when you're indicating all of that's been sorted it didn't do any of that and it's much quicker on the boot up of the car at the start and you only get one chime it's just that it is that rather annoying chime rather than the, the new softer one so that's all good we have 59 miles on the clock and um we're going to explore what the the car is like over these next few years with it so that's the beginning of our our new journey with the mg zs ev Coming back up from the, the dealer, we thought we would try out the MG Pilot. So um, this is the first car I've had that has the adaptive cruise control. And I know there have been some updates on, on how it works. It actually worked really well. Um, so that is a kind of combination of different features, the kind of lane keep assist and uh, the adaptive cruise control. and just with a, a light hold on the on the wheel it was able basically to drive us the, the whole way back and uh, I you know it does the usual thing if you if you let go entirely it will leap at you to warn you to uh, keep your hands on the wheel um, but it was very uh, impressive and actually very smooth in keeping track to the to the lane there are a couple of quite steep uh, bends quite tight bends on the motorway coming up and it tracked through those bends no problem at all and this was on a really really foggy uh, misty day so I mean here we're up the top you can't you can hardly we're at the, the lighthouse is just here and uh, you can hardly see the top of the lighthouse um, it's so misty today but uh, foghorn see that over there the old foghorn for the ships coming in. Um, so that was really actually impressive. It uh, it was kind of spitting on and off, but not really not really raining hard. Um, oh, the road has come to an end. There's a new harbour. You see all this down here. There's a new harbour being built here uh, for the. Uh, a new deep sea harbour for the for the city for cruise liners and and all the rest so that is going on here so they have stopped our fun we can't drive all the way around uh the lighthouse any longer never mind so actually I listen. yeah i'm impressed <laughs> so the quality of the car is actually pretty good i mean we, we took one for a, a, a and let me just put it in park here um for a test drive back in September it would have been so that's when we'd put the order in and then kind of forgotten about it in you know in some ways because it'd been so so long then to to wait um but uh and it, and it felt fine the the model that we we tried as a demonstrator and this is yeah feels feels good all feels well screwed together uh quality is is all there you know steering wheel feels good um there are a few little things that we need to sort out there's still some of the plastic that was yeah. protecting the um the uh air vents here the kind of shiny black uh piano black kind of plastic so th there's a little little bits of that still appearing we need to try and that's somebody with nails needs to do that ping those bits out <laughs> um but uh, uh yeah it, it feels it feels great and it's uh perky there, there are some things that i'm gonna have to get used to which are very different to the zoe and the regen 
that is available is one of those things. So the Regen 3, which I've got it on at the moment, it, it defaults to, is um, much stronger level. So I'm so used to letting off the accelerator early uh, and using the Regen to slow down that I'm having to force myself not to just let off, but to you know, kind of feather off on the, the throttle and let the regen do its thing. So that's going to take a little bit of, oh, it's just one of those things you, you get used to over time. And I suppose you've got all these different options of what levels, three different levels to uh, to use. So that's fine. Uh, I've kind of set it up with, it didn't have the lane keep assist on when we drove back up. I was just using the MG Pilot. So I have turned all that on and I went for another kind of drive of the dual carriageway just to check that it you know it wasn't doing the strange when you're crossing the lane even though you're indicating it would still set up an alarm that has been changed so it, it, it didn't do that it was only if you crossed it when you weren't indicating that it would bleep at you so that's all good and everything else seems fine so um i think that's really enough this is just for it has arrived and then it's probably going to sit for a few months until we can really go places <laughs> the way things are at the moment but they, there we go um but yes we'll be keeping this for quite a few years uh so here's hoping uh, all goes well just as uh, we've had a good time with the reno which is up to forty-eight thousand miles or something like that uh, we've done on the reno now Well, interesting. This is my uh, first ever attempt at uh, charging with the CCS charger. It's the first charge on the MG ZS. And I'd run it down to about, uh, I think it was about 20% was left. And I'm at a charger. It's a, one of the Siemens chargers, uh, FACEC or whatever it is, the kind of model. Now, I've used this for donkey's years now, uh, but always just use the AC side of it. And it's when the plug hasn't been like demolished and stuff like that, it's always worked uh, fine. But that has taken me probably about 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe even to get the car charging. Um, I had to call Charge Place Scotland. Now, there's a, so there's a whole bunch of things going on here. I'd ordered an, another uh, Charge Place Scotland card so that we had one for both cars. So it's the first time that card has been used and it kept flagging up that it was unauthorized, uh, even though uh, they could tell at their end that it should be working fine. Um, the unit was reset and then I would it would take umpteen attempts to get it to the point where the charger would even allow you to pick, you know, AC, CCS or the Chatamo. And then when I finally got it connected and charging, uh, the first time when I came back to the car and then kind of turned it on to see what it was doing, it then after a few seconds failed the charging. And... Uh, I'm just trying to see if it's still, yeah, it's still, I can still hear it whirring away. So it's still, uh, it's still charging. You can hear the charger. And um, yes, and then it, uh, so I think it was my, uh, it then tried connecting and then it was saying charger would charger failed and then user uh, ca caused the, the charge to stop, which I hadn't done. So multiple failed attempts to try and get the car to charge. And finally, it is it is charging. Um, so now I'm, I don't know if I should turn it, try to turn it on. I want to turn it on because I want to see what it's doing. Um, but, mm, yes, is that a good idea or not? I don't know. Let me try and uh, look in the car. And... Uh, yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it and see what happens. So, um, here we go. I'm just going for the the start here. So that's first press, Landlords and land. we will mute that. And second press. And 
and let's just uh, put the fan down a wee bit. Uh, yeah, so let's go and uh, have a look at what is going on. Oh, well, that's a good sign. Um, <laughs> right. Alrighty. 118 amps. 408 volts. I think, what were we, about 30% or something like that? It was saying on the on the charge. Right, quick maths. All right, well that's uh, a little bit over 48 kilowatts. So actually, spot on. I mean, it's a 50 kilowatt charger this, so can't really ask for, for more than that. And that's a useful step up from the uh, Zoe when it's charging, which is, you know, well, supposed to be 43, but if you're getting 40 you're doing well uh, at this charger some of the other chargers are way slower uh, but this charger is usually is usually pretty good so 48 kilowatts that's okay so yeah i'm happy to see the the charging speed that's great um i have just had a wee drive around but not really driving hard uh, or anything like that it's quite warm i can't tell you the temperature outside because that bit of the update hasn't worked as you know um but it has been a warm day today and the car has been sitting in the sun most of the day so um it, it yeah the battery will be a uh, a nice temperature i'm sure um yeah so there we go um obviously i'm gonna have to try a few other chargers and see what goes on but that didn't fill me with a huge amount of confidence uh, but as i say it's a it's a few different things so it's a brand new card i've never used before um going on uh this is the first time i've used ccs so i don't know what the um other than seeing what other people issues they, they've had i've never had experience with it myself um so we'll keep an eye on that i'll try another rapid charger for the next charge but somewhere else in the city and see if that is better or worse car's great though and uh took it for a drive last night actually and so i don't know if there have been some changes that have been made to the auto headlights um in the kind of server updates i didn't see there'd been a note about that but they work really well so i know some folks have had real problems with them um this was down a kind of winding country road and it worked great for that uh on the motorway it was super misty so as he wanted to turn them off because he didn't want the high beams on um, so I'll have to wait for another time to see how it works on a dual carriageway setting. At night, most of our dual carriageway is not illuminated, so uh, near here. So as it would be handy if it worked well. Um, one thing I have done, uh, it just arrived today, is I, I got a um, wireless charger for the uh, for phones, and it actually sits i think it was called cho tech or something like that was the brand and it's not too big so it sits perfectly in the wee little phone cubby and then the cable just ducks through the hole there and down to one of the usb chargers uh, below but actually uh, it's really neat and you just fling your phone on there and it starts charging when you're in the car now of course if you're wanting to connect to android auto or Apple CarPlay or something like that you'll need to plug in but um, for most of the time when I'm just pootering around uh, that is fantastic and here is what it looks like. All right um, I think that's probably enough for now uh, some gratuitous shots um, and so far no more seagulls have uh, left their wares uh, upon the car. All right. <laughs> Cheers. See you later. Bye.